All right. What's the word, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. It's been a long time since um, I've done any of these webinars, to be quite honest. You know, this is usually uh, Jesus territory here. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get right into this thing here. Um, I, I guess the, the first thing here to throw out there is the, uh, is the Roku as well as the market as a whole. Um, how many of you guys are caught short? I'm just curious here. Is anybody caught short uh, this market right now? Uh, I think after that gap up that we saw to what what was it 296 or something like that. I mean things got pretty pretty obvious. And then as we held the Friday session, or was it the Friday session? Oh no, or the Monday session, yesterday session, where we just kind of we were just sitting there. We were just sitting there doing nothing. I think that was it for me. I think I remember yesterday just being in Vegas. And by the way, I've been in Vegas uh, since last Thursday, probably. And, um, and actually, I think even before that. And I've missed, you know, I've missed most of this shit, uh, especially that Friday, especially that Friday where, um, you know, we had the we had the really big gap up and all the news come out. And we we're up like friggin' 50 handles or whatever. OK. Um, and, and then again, uh, folks, folks who can't hear me, let me know. Um, some some people are complaining here. It's muted. We got to work with a uh, a different audio source here too. Spencer. Let me know uh, if if we uh, if we drop out. Um, so yeah, I've been in Vegas this whole time. I've been in Vegas, and and I think after I saw that big move back to 298, I mean, we were pretty much back here. That was it. I threw in the towel on a lot of a lot of ideas. I threw in the towel on a lot of short ideas in general, and I haven't been watching the flow. And I finally kind of popped in and just took a look at things in general. And there was a lot of SPY 305s. There was a lot of SPY 305s. There was a lot of, um, you know, I think even further than that, but I, I remember seeing there was a lot of activity on those particular strikes. Anything 300s, 302s, any of that, all those strikes, we really started to uh, to, to, to see. Um, and then that was kind of it. That was kind of it. And now I'm kind of sitting in this situation where I'm coming back to the market and I'm looking at names like Roku, right? I'm looking at names like Amazon. Uh, one in particular, the Amazon here, where finally I took a look at it today. And Amazon, I don't know if you guys have been trading this or watching this. It's similar to the Netflix where, you know, it's been kind of weighted down. And they've been kind of pushing it aside, right? And, and not really coming back to this particular name, despite the fact that Spy is back up here. And today you get this nice 30, 40 point move, or whatever the hell it is in this Amazon. And finally some buyers show up on this Amazon. Um, and then you have the bank earnings today and they chewed those things back up. So if you take a look at the Goldman here this morning was looking pretty ugly and they chewed all of it back up as well. You know, and overall, you're just kind of looking at all this stuff and saying, all right, you know, we can kind you can kind of feel that melt up coming back up again, that bubbling bubbling back up and if we do end up over all time highs you know you're going to uh see a situation where you know we're going to continue to see those names shooting to uh to all-time highs um and trading pretty well uh, uh that apple you know was always trading pretty well and never kind of sold off and uh you know we're looking at it up here in the 230s that nvidia it maybe had one day one or two days where this NVIDIA looked kind of scary, you know, but even then they never sold this thing off either. And then today, look at this fucking, look at this fucking thing. You know, you, you gap up here, the 190, and now you trade all the way up to freaking 200. Insane move here on the NVIDIA. So you got like names like these coming out of nowhere, or not really coming out of nowhere, just kind of never really selling off uh, uh, with the market weakness. And finally, just getting paid today. And then the one that I always go back to, I always go back to just to see 
if it's close to all time highs is this friggin' Microsoft. And, and as you can see, we're, we're almost at all time highs on the Microsoft. So again, if they can't sell a name like this, if they can't sell an AMD, if they can't, if they can't sell an Amazon, if they can't sell, uh, you know, many other names here, um, you know, what's this really going to look like here? You know, so I like the melt up. I like the melt up situation uh, over uh, over 300 and into those all time highs. Um, and subsequently, I'm going to start shorting calls or sorry, shorting puts. Uh, so you can see over here, I started shorting uh, some puts here on the Amazon, the 1720s. Uh, I'll definitely be looking to short more of the Roku puts. And again, like I'm just coming back into this game after missing all this shit. So most likely here, I'm going to stick to the short uh, put writing side. Um, but again, we could get a tape bomb at any time. OK, how many of you guys have gotten caught in a tape bomb, caught in a uh, in a Donald Trump tape bomb? Uh, regarding the, uh, you know, the China news or, uh, or anything else, or even the ISM numbers. I, I know the ISM numbers took us down, what, 100 handles, and uh, we came all the way the fuck back. We came all the way back, and it didn't fucking matter. How many of you guys got caught in any of these, uh, in these tape bombs? Nate Davis is saying every time I go long off these tape bombs, I mean, in which case you should be pretty rich right now. You, you know, you should be all right. Should be all right in life if uh, if you're going long after every one of those uh, of those tape bombs. Um, I heard of uh, actually one of my friends in Miami uh, got blown out of a ten million dollar account short spy. Uh, he was too aggressive short spy and he got caught. He got caught in some of these gaps. Uh, this one in particular, and then just got blown out off the open. You know, so took a ten million dollar hit, guys. You know, I, he was convinced here we were going to, uh, you know, we were going to sell off after 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 this area or maybe it was this one. I don't know where he was short, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure down here he got stuck short down here and then blew out 10 million, blew out 10 million bucks. Yeah, I mentioned it in the chat room and this was while I was in Vegas. I got the call, you know, and, uh, you know, so so it really doesn't matter. here, guys. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, what your account size is, you can always get caught in a situation, ugly situation like that, where you're over levered or you get too aggressive, uh, you get too directionally biased and, uh, you know, one day, two days or whatever it is, just kind of blows you out. Um, and that can happen to any of us, uh, you know, and he didn't have a hedge, I guess. Uh, and again, this guy's rich. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about him. Uh, he'll be back in no time. <laughs> it's freaking one trade, uh, you know, for guys like him. But again, it's pretty ugly. You know, I got the call and I was like, whoa. And then remember, I'm in Vegas. Like, you know, everybody else was kind of trading at the same time. And I'm in Vegas. Like, OK, I could trade. You know, I could sit here and fucking trade and get aggressive and da 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 da. Uh, and I think as soon as I saw the spy gap and go, um, you know, that it was at that point where I was like, you know what? And then I got the call. I was like, you know what? I ain't doing shit. I'm not trading. I'm not doing none of this stuff. So I, I didn't look at anything, you know, and Vegas was really great, man. We got, I got to meet a lot of traders down in Vegas that I didn't know existed. And some of these guys were young cats. I got to meet all the top guys at SMB and SMB, for those of you guys who don't know, is basically like the only prop firm in existence that still funds their traders a hundred freaking percent. And this was amazing to me because, you know, who the hell would take risk? Who the hell would take risk like that on any prop traders? You know what I'm saying? Like who would do that? And I'm not talking regular risk guys. Some of these guys have a $25 million buying power account, right? And none of it is their money. You know what I mean? Who the fuck would do that in this day and age, especially with this market, especially with all this commission structure nonsense? They don't make money off commissions. There's no way to make money off commissions. They make money off of straight P&L. You know what firm does that now? Who who would you think I would you think I would fund half the traders in my damn steam room in the steam room? Fuck no. OK, there's maybe three people in there. There's maybe three people in there 
that I would actually fund. One of them is sitting here in this, uh, you know, in, in in this chat right now. Okay. But hell no, I wouldn't be out there funding nobody, right? And these guys are funding aggressively, you know, traders here uh, at SMB. And again, you know, it's 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 a small number that have really gotten to that level. And of course, they manage their risk very well. You know, they'll blow you out without even asking you. That you know, they'll just rip you out of your account or rip you out of your trades without even asking you. You know, they'll do a lot of risk management. Don't get me wrong. Um, and then they'll trade a shit ton of options too, you know. So a lot of the young bucks over there, they'll trade a lot of options. They, you know, there were some guys that are 25, 26, trading a freaking tw 25 million dollar buying power account and making, you know, two mil, three mil, four mil in a year. And granted, you got to give up, um, you know, you you got to give up, uh, you know, half of your profits. Maybe it's 40 percent. I mean, depending on how long you've been there and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so so there's there's some things that go alongside with it. But remember, there's definitely a good amount of people that still would rather trade somebody else's money. And I'm sure you guys would agree to this. Uh, the dynamic is much different when you're trading somebody else's money, like mentally wise. You know, so how many of you guys trade uh, other people's money? How many of you guys actually trade other people's money at this current moment and can speak to the difference? I mean, I can tell you right now when I ran the hedge fund. You know, I could definitely sleep more at night uh, trading somebody else's money because I knew, you know, I wasn't really on the I wasn't really on the hook for it. You know, somebody else was taking the risk on me. So, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. However, uh, I was still tied to the performance and only getting paid by the performance. One of the traders actually told me like, hey, you know, even if I'm down in my account, you know, I just have to make it back. <laughs> That's all he said. He was just like. I, the only way I'm going to get paid is I just have to I just have to make it back. But at least it wasn't, you know, he didn't lose a half a million dollars of his own money, uh, which was super, which was super interesting. Um, anyways, so uh, other people I met to in Vegas, there was all these chartists there as well, uh, you know, doing very well. And, and, and it kind of just solidified. It doesn't really matter what your strategy is. You know, you can put in that work and you can make money out here. You know, the question really becomes, becomes what's your mental game like, uh, you know, and how do you avoid traps like the ones that we've been seeing littered all over the markets uh, in the form of Twitch, uh, tweets and ISM numbers and all that kind of stuff. All right. So I think, guys, if we get over 302 this time, uh, you know, again, every single time we've kind of tested these levels, we have sold off. So, you know, there's going to be de there's definitely going to be. Um, you know, some seller, some aggressive sellers up here at 300 to 302. But if we're able to just kind of gap through, which could happen, <laughs> you know, they might just say, fuck it. We're just going to gap through all this shit. Um, and, 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 and just, and just rip right through it. And I can totally see them doing that because that would basically negate all these sellers up here. All the sellers have to turn to buyers. They have to gut out of their positions. And that gives you enough of the juice that you need, you know, to really to really push through those all time highs. And then some, you know, I was looking at that JPM uh, uh, today as well. And I think I'm pretty sure this thing is at all time highs, if I'm not mistaken, too. Uh, so you're looking at this thing at 120, 121. Yeah, this thing is. Yeah, dude, this thing is a fucking all time. High. JP Morgan. It's a fucking all-time highs, and this is this is a this is a five-year chart, a two-year chart right here, and this is all-time highs. And again, you know, it didn't really close up there, but you can kind of imagine a world where we slowly, 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 slowly grind higher. And what are those names? You know, what names do they want to be in? I, I don't think it's going to be the same as before the Netflix of the world, even the Amazons of the world. If you notice, you know, these things are definitely. Somebody rotated out of these things completely. The Shopify's of the world, uh, you know, the ones that previously were tagged up uh, all the way on the upside. You know, maybe they'll move to different names. You got the semiconductors. Maybe they'll move to different, uh, you know, tech names. You know, maybe they come back in these Nvidia's, and you can see some serious upside on these things. Uh, the Twitters of the world, like I don't know. I, I really don't know exactly what uh, they want to target here. Um, you know, 
But for me, I think I'm in a situation where it's going to be easy. It's going to be much easier to go into the end of the year with an actual fucking direction, which as before, for the last couple of months here, we just haven't had any solid direction. And it's been very difficult. I think I think during this chop here, like I was I was probably up and down on the month, hundreds of thousands of dollars and still made it out, you know, at the end of the month. I'm surprised. I'm really freaking surprised, um, you know, that 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 I haven't really taken a bad month. I'm really, really, really surprised uh, it hasn't happened. Even the beginning of this month, I was down about 100 grand. Uh, because I was short SPX calls. I was short SPX calls. I think it was maybe this day. Yeah, it was this day right here. It was this day right here. I was short SPX calls because I was convinced right here, just like one of my my boys in Miami. That's now it's starting to come back to me. Uh, you know, they were fading this whole freaking thing and they were betting on 280s. They were betting on 280s down here, right here. And then everybody got stuck in this thing. I got so stuck on a short SPX uh, call that just went horrible against me. And I would think it was down about 100 grand. Next day, I was able to recoup a lot of that and then sell it all again and then just kind of make it back. The Roku there helped there too. So if you take a look at the Roku during those days, um, you know, this was, this was the, yeah, this was these days right here. And then we had a monster gap up. So the Roku kind of shook everyone out here. I was still in it, and then we had a gap up on Roku. It gapped up to maybe 114. This was the last day that I was in the room before I went to Vegas, and we gapped up to maybe 114, 113, somewhere around there, and then off the open, we just kind of sat there. We just kind of sat there. We didn't do much. I think this was the day right here, right here. Yeah, right here. You know, So we didn't trade down the gap. This was a four-point gap right here. And we didn't really trade it down. And then I just kept selling puts, selling puts, selling puts. And now I'm back up. And now I'm actually back up on the month, you know, 20, 30 grand here. And then I just bounced to Vegas and that was it. I was like, fuck it. That's it. Give me the fuck out of here. I don't want to look at the rest of this shit. Um, and then obviously you see today another big, another huge update here on this Roku. I think at some point it's going to be a good trade to come in and short some calls here too. So I think I might be on that trade there as well. OK, uh, but what are you guys trading? Talk to me about what you guys are trading. Talk to me about where you guys are at. Talk to me about sentiment wise, where you feel uh, we're at. A lot of you guys are looking flow differently than me. Uh, uh, for me, again, I just look at it as sentiment. Obviously, this is completely different from, uh, you know, what Jesus would uh, what what the big man would uh, would say. Um, you know, he has a completely different way of looking at the market. But again, I look at shit like this. I look at shit like this. I look at these off-brand, well, not really off-brand. I look at these names. I look at these big names, um, and I kind of look where most of the majority of that action is kind of going off. So if we see JPM, if we see Microsoft, for example, I think there was a Microsoft 144 that went off uh, at some point today. I, I, I take a look at shit like this. These are names that I'm already watching, you know, as an indicator basically of the overall market. And I'm like, dude, if I see shit like this, you know, this is a couple of weeks out on the Microsoft. Granted, it's not, you know, it's not that big, but we're in a position where this makes sense to me. You know, making this trade for a hundred grand or even if it was for a million bucks, you know, it fucking makes sense to me. OT is talking about a VXX call seller into the close yesterday. That's another huge deal. You know, you get a call seller on the freaking VXX, you know, these guys and, and depending on how heavy it was, but, you know. You can get the picture here. I mean, this VXX has been, you know, if you're getting aggressive call sellers here on the VXX at these peaks, um, you know, this has been a trade that has worked for, for honestly, like five fucking years. You, you, like you could run a hedge fund and just do this. Now, it would be very, very complicated during certain parts, you know, where you would really have to flip the script and go long and your hedging has to be tight. But legit, you could you could short VIX, and that's your whole strategy for the hedge fund. And it'll, you know, if you got your wrist tight, <laughs> you know, you're okay with the thing. You know, that could be a, that really could be a great strategy. Uh, Michael here is talking about the BYND short BYND. Um, I think for the BYND, I haven't really looked at this thing lately, but um, oh wow! So it's finally doing it. 
you know what they're able to do on this thing? And, and, and this thing frustrated the shit out of me. Like I caught this move. I think I caught this move. And then I just got frustrated with it all because I really thought, you know, it, sh it should have tested 100 bucks by now. But now you're at 120 and there's a huge gap under here, you know, down to about 100 bucks. And every time it's like they kind of they kind of they kind of put these 20 point move rallies here to, to just stick it to people. Um, but this is great. This has been a great call sell trade, similar to that VIX short situation. This has been a great, great call sell trade, uh, you know, and continues to pay out. I told myself I want to go long this stock under 100 bucks for my long term account. And this will be my first trade for my long term account buy this BYND at maybe 90 bucks or maybe 80 bucks. And this will be my first long portfolio trade. But really, I don't give a shit. Uh, TLRY, yes, again, all the way down. Um, you know, TLRY could have paid you, you know, since we shorted it at 250 fucking bucks, man. You know, this has been an unbelievable situation where the call sale would pay you out entirely. That's disgusting. I mean, this really shows you the power of leverage, the power of hype, and the power of shorting calls, getting stuck. Um, you know, this really shows you the power of it. This looks like every altcoin that altcoin, this looks like every altcoin chart I've ever seen. That's what this fucking looks like, um, you know, which has been absolutely insane here. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm positioned or where I'm thinking about for the week, uh, for the rest of the month. And then into the rest of the uh, into the rest of the year. And again, remember this this could change all in the in the in the context of one freaking tweet. And that's the ugly part about this stuff. So if you guys don't have cap, how many of you guys hedge for this now? How many of you guys hedge for this now? How many of you guys hedge for the catastrophe now? So let's say you got a long book, right? There's a lot of you guys that have a long book. How many of you guys are actually hedging? for catastrophe so what i mean by catastrophe i'm talking about like buying a freaking lotto call every single week just to hedge your ass on something crazy you know so if you take a look at the if you take a look at the uh the spy chain right now we got the end of the week here being 18 you know if you buy something out of the money right here on an october let's say okay so let's go all the way up here and you know let's say it's a 294 you can even buy it for like 20 cents 20 30 cents and you get a, 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 a you know a 40 handle move, a 50 handle move, or something like that. Maybe you want to add another week to it or something. Um, but just something to hedge your ass in there, man. You know, so so you're paying super cheap for it. You know, selling calls against what you have for a long book, you know, is always a good way to go. It gets a little sticky too, though, when you're when you when you have you know 40, 50 handle moves <laughs> for the freaking day. But think about it too. Like, think about how many people are short. Think about how many people are short. And that's why it's so, that's why we get so aggressive sometimes, even when we're up 10 handles. Like last night, we were only up, you know, 10 handles. We were literally only up 10 handles. And then we have this program run for the whole day. And then nobody fucking sells, you know, not one person sold out of anything. Um, you know, maybe into the close a little bit, but that was, but that was it. And you can imagine a world now where we hit 300, we hit 302. There's a lot of people stuck short, man. There's a lot of people stuck fucking short still, um, trying to short every single day, adding to shorts every single day. Uh, you know, and you can imagine what that would freaking look like here. So again, I would be cautious. I would always be cautious. Anytime you know Powell's going to be up there speaking, anytime you know, you know, a tweet's going to come off here from Trump or, or he's going to be talking about something, anytime you know now you have an active um, um, uh, jobs report or, a, you know, economics report or something like that, the level of intensity that could happen from some of the programs based off of any of this shit could be very, very aggressive, you know? And I remember when those ISM, when those ISM numbers came out, you know, what was everybody saying? Everybody was saying how uh, aggressive they were or how aggressively bad they were. And they were like, oh my God, you gotta pay attention now. You gotta pay attention now. Where was it? Was it, uh, was it, was it, was it before? I think it was before, maybe it was, yeah, it was this, 
right? So an ISM number would come out and then another ISM number came out here. We traded down to 285, yo. We traded down 285 and then came back, came back that same freaking day. It was insane, absolutely insane. And everybody was like, oh, my God, ISM, ISM. It's been the worst ever. This is it. This is it. And that's why a lot of people got aggressively short right here off these, you know, off, off of this uh, off of this news. And meanwhile, I'm looking at it like, when the fuck do we ever care about ISM? Lo and behold, we come all the way back. But again, that's 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 in hindsight right there. We could have done anything. Um, you know, so you never know, guys. You never know. Be sure to freaking hedge. You know, be sure to cover your positions, you know, lighten up, add, subtract, come back in, you know, change things up a little bit. You know, that way you're not holding the bag here on a program that just kind of takes you out and takes so long to come back. Like, guys, they're moving shit way more than you can stay, than you can stay, um, you know, with a cool head about this kind of stuff, you know. I mean, if you guys have a long book and all of a sudden there's a tape bomb where we're down, let's say, to 294 or 293 and you're long up here, you know, what, what are you going to do? You're going to hold through that shit? It's, 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 it gets much easier if you're going to hold through it, add through it when you have your hedges on, uh, at least some kind of catastrophe hedges as well. OK, uh, so any questions? I think we had a question here about tape. Um, I am going to be trading here basically for the rest of the year. I'm starting a firm down in Puerto Rico uh, where it's basically going to be a trading firm. People pay for desk space. There's a lot of traders down here that, you know, I want to share information with as well. They're just looking for a space to trade. Um, as far as the leverage thing, I mean, you know, after I talked to, you know, SMB, Mike uh, Belly Fiore, um, you know, about the situation too and how they do it. I mean, again, they've been doing this thing. They've been doing this shit for years, so he has really worked on the risk side of it, you know. So to be able to pop that up and and uh, and allow other traders to to trade a higher book, I don't think that's my that'll be my game plan, um, you know. But I'll be trading aggressively into uh, the rest of the year, uh, and most likely here if I can, and if we live in a world where spy is over 300 and all-time highs, I would really love. A situation where for a month I can just take every single weekly here and then just destroy, you know, just take nickels and dimes here on all of these puts, you know, and slowly, slowly write these things, you know, and then especially for names that want to break out. So, for example, if Microsoft, you know, heads towards a 145, let's say this is going to be a great short put right, um, you know, for weeks here, you know, you take a look at the apples, the NVIDIA, too. If this NVIDIA now finally lives in a world where we slowly see buyers coming in this thing, you know, another 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 kind of opportunity. Obviously, the Amazon, that Chipotle, that Chipotle, this thing has just kind of been dancing around. I don't know if we can trust it over 840, but nobody's really selling this fucking thing. You know, so if you get another trend on Chipotle up to 900, you know, that's going to pay me out very aggressively here. So that's a name that I'm definitely watching uh, as well. And then again, you look at the same names, the visas, the MasterCards of the world. You know, they love picking these things up, uh, you know, when they're down. And if you look at the MasterCard here, it's only it's only 10 points here off those highs. So, again, names like this are always great names to just roll right back into and start the game again. You know, start the game again. I like that Google, though, too. Google has been much stronger relative to the other names. So if you take a look at the Google here and if you get a move to, let's say, you know, 1300 bucks. There's going to be a lot of premium to write down here. So the more they can hold this Google up, you know, I'd love to, to spend the rest of the year doing little work, very little work and just writing and just write and just writing fucking puts. That, that's it. Make a hundred grand a month kind of thing. And then just, just write the fucking puts. That's it. You know, not get too aggressive. If obviously if there's something crazy, you know, that I get to trade, um, you know, I'll take a swing at it. That Tesla has been quite interesting, too. Uh, I haven't been watching the flow on it at all. I haven't been. I'm, I'm amazed it's back up here to 260. Who knows where this thing is going? Um, but anyways, any questions? We had a question here about tape reading before. Somebody asked, uh, how long uh, does it take, uh, you know, to learn your tape reading? And he put tape reading in quotations. It's like, what do you do? And this fucking tape reading you speak of. Um, 
Bro, it doesn't take that long. You know, people think it's, uh, you know, it's an aggressive situation where, you know, they think it's going to take them years to figure out. And I think it, it takes years to 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 perfect, um, you know, but a tape, a good tape reader, actually somebody who's taking the course. Why don't you answer this? Somebody who's taking the course. Uh, anybody want to answer this? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody want to throw out a number? It's going to be different for everybody. Um, you know, understanding how to sit here and read this level two, read the transactions here, you know, it's definitely something that takes practice. Um, you know, but once I figured out for me in particular, and remember, I didn't have anybody teaching me. So it took me about six months. I would say it took me about six months to figure out how to read this thing. Uh, but remember, I didn't have anybody teaching me. Right. So, so, you know, so for many of my students, you know, it's taken them a month, I would say. It's taken them a month, two months to figure out how to read it, okay? But, again, how to use it aggressively and how to connect it with a lot of other things. Keyshawn here is saying it took me four to six weeks to get it, but I still don't execute based off of what I see. And that's a mental thing, you know? So he could, look, he could be looking at charts or he could be looking at tape and have the same issue. You know what I mean? So uh, Andy is saying a few months in a stock that is in play where the liquidity is not insane. You know, Roku is a great one to practice on right now. That's a great uh, comment here for uh, folks here trying to learn how to tape read. Um, you know, pick one name, pick one name and watch it. You know, the problem is, though, if I told you right now, I think it's Michael here who asked the question. Like if I told Michael here right now to to look at one stock for a whole of, you know, even two weeks, and I have to bet money on it, like I'd give, I'd want somebody to give me 10 to one odds because there's no fucking way he's going to sit there and look at one stock. I mean, he, you know, you're a human being and I have the least bit of, I mean, I hate to say it like that, but it's true, you know, human, be, human beings for, at a high performance level because we want to get them, you know, we, we, we assume here we're playing, we're trading a performance, this is a performance career. You know, most humans, I wouldn't bet on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it. Michael here is saying, I have been, been only in BYND and watching it. Well, there you go. So pick that one, you know? So pick the BYND tape and just sit there, watch your level two, watch your transactions, and then look at it as supply and demand, you know? But again, it's it, it really does help if you have somebody like myself here guiding you towards what to watch for, what doesn't matter, and what you're really looking for, okay? Um, uh, Mosh here saying, uh, let's see, is there standalone, uh, no brokerage account, Fidelity Trading? I have an account with uh, IBKR. Yeah, I got I got Interactive Brokers too. So I trade through Interactive Brokers now and then one other broker out of Chicago, you know, that I have a couple hundred grand in that account too. So it's a prop firm, which is a uh, sterling front end. Fidelity, I just use for, for this shit. I just use for data just because it's clean. It's clean. There's no bells and whistles. Well, there is bells and whistles, but it's just nice and simple. You know what I mean? Interactive brokers, I don't even know. I don't even know how to pull up a fucking chart on that shit. Sterling is very clean, too. I love the level twos on Sterling. Sterling level twos are by far the best. They are by far the best. So I'll have a bunch of those up on a different screen, and then I'll just use those for, um, you know, for data as well. Uh, Will here is saying, Lucci, what do you think of this Tesla long daily chart formed uh, a rickshaw man today? So apparently now there's a there's a new chart pattern. It's called rickshaw chart pattern. And if you go to the third world countries, you you take a ride in a rickshaw. And uh, now they've created a fucking technology pattern off of that one. So I don't even know whether to answer this question or just boot this motherfucker the hell out the webinar here. Cause he's just making up his own technical patterns and then acting like they're freaking, uh, they're, they're freaking great. Again, I'm just kidding. Will. I, you know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just messing with you. So it formed a, formed a pattern, wait for highs to confirm any endpoint. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, I think if you're long, if you're long the Tesla and, and obviously these big 10 point moves, you got to kind of wait through these things and you got to kind of focus more on the pullbacks. You know, and it kind of the same thing happened to the Roku there. Like the whole way up, they were really shaking people out. You know, so I don't know if any of you guys were in the Roku before this thing gapped up over the 112, but it was it was a very difficult hold because it would get up to 110 and then it would sell off six freaking points. 
You know, so all the options, they brought down to nothing here before they, they ended up making this move happen. And then once it gapped and held, that was it. That was, that was it. That was, your, that, was, that was your sign. You know, so for the Tesla here, they've kind of been doing the same thing. So watch the, watch the sell-offs. Really just pay attention to the sell-offs here. And if they, if they keep selling it off maybe like very quickly off the open, um, you know, and they, they kind of eat it right back, you know those buyers are still there. And this is the tape side of things. It's not going to be, you know, your, 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 your rickshaw, you know, candlestick <laughs> patterns, whatever the hell you're looking at. Um, but I would, I would look at it that way, you know, I would, I would definitely look at it that way. And then also look at the fact that we've been here before. And then when we were here, you know, we kind of sold off from here. So 260, 265, it looks like, you know, and then we had this monster gap down. Obviously the upside is huge. It looks great. Um, you know, and you could really be in a situation where you get too heavy up here. You know, most traders, they get too aggressive up at the tops of these things and then they're not prepared for the downside. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're just not prepared for the for the pullbacks. So that's why I'm saying pay more, pay more attention to the pullbacks, pay more attention to how your options trade on the pullbacks. And then you'll start to get an idea of where, you know, of where to get heavy on this shit, assuming this thing's going to continue. And then maybe the rickshaw in the third world country turns into a fucking Bentley here for Will Crowder. And now he goes from sitting in rickshaws to sitting in, you know, even a Toyota Camry at that point would be better than the rickshaw. So you could call it that too. Uh, Mosh here is saying I have 35 grand uh, trading mostly equities doing fine. I'm afraid to start to go big with options. Um, what would be your first advice? Bro, if you're doing fine, don't fucking size up. Don't size up. And I bet that's something that you're not even thinking about right now because your emotions right there are just pushing you to want to size up because you're doing well. Immediately, anybody who trades options are doing well, they start to say, oh, shit, let me just put my whole account up here. Let me let me juice it up a little bit. Let me go to 100 lot. Let me go to 200 lot or whatever. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even size up, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing and fight the fight your emotions to want to go bigger. You know what I mean? Because that 35 account, remember options are already levered, man. They're already levered. You find some good moves here and there, that account is gonna double. Your 35K is going to 70, you're going to 100. So you'd only be doing yourself a disservice by trying to do too much, you know, in a world where if you size up and you're wrong on this, on in this world, especially if you're trading options, you know, it's, 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 it's not, it's not ideal. So I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even do it. So don't go big with options, bro. Just, just find, just do what you're doing with the equities. And if you find something hot, you find something juicy, like a rickshaw pattern here in Tesla or whatever, you know, maybe throw a 10 lot out on the options. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe throw a little bit out there, but do not, do not size up in fucking options. If you're not an aggressive options trader to begin with, you're trading mostly equities. There's only certain moves that you want to add options to, and those are the freaking big ones. Those are the big ones. You know, so for example, if we get a CMG push to 900, then you want to come in and trade some fucking options. You know, if we figured out this 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 chop area right here, and finally this thing breaks out, you know, then you want to trade some freaking options. But if you're gonna gut around options during shit like this, and you're gonna size up. You can piss, you can piss that, you can kiss that 35k goodbye. You might as well go hang out in India, man, in the, in, with the with the rickshaws here with uh, with Will Crowler. Any other questions? Any other questions at all? <clears throat> and again, this is uh, this is a long time here. Jesus couldn't make it here today, so I had to sub in here at the last moment. I hope I didn't disappoint. I haven't done these things in, in quite a while. Um, OT is saying, uh, can you speak to how you get back into the market flow? Yeah, after a break, you know, after a break from the market, it, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's difficult, but it's not at the same time. Because even though I'm taking a break, like I still look at the same thing. So for me, as soon as I see Microsoft looking like this, immediately I'm already back into the market. You know what I'm saying? Like we've done it enough. We've done it enough OT that we come back, we come back, we leave, we come back, we leave, we come back. I can, I can just take a look at one of one or two of these things. 
I take a look at SPY. I take a look at Microsoft. Obviously, I took a look at that in video when you when you threw it out there. Um, you know, and and it wasn't a surprise because Nvidia, you would and and I know you've been in this name anyway. They've held this thing up really, 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 really well, unusually well. They were able to hold this Nvidia up unusually well, and despite all the selling off that we had, nobody came for this fucking Nvidia. And now we're looking at it right here at freaking 200 bucks. And this market is right under 300, you know? So, and then the Apple, then the Apple too. Nobody sold that thing off. And now all of a sudden over two freaking 30, um, you know, this is another one. And then the Google, nobody sold that thing off. And now look at this, you know, so this, there's this wide ass range chop, which I hate. I hate when Spy does this. I really don't like when, I really don't like to trade when SPY has these really, really wide ranges. I'll come in, you know, really, really light, or I'll try to find a name that doesn't trade with SPY, which for me was Roku and Shop, uh, you know, and getting that sell-off. Um, you know, but now we're kind of in a situation where it looks like all these roads here are slowly leading towards the all-time highs. We're coming into earnings season as well, so we know there's still going to be a little bit of chop. Um, you know, but as soon as I come back and I look at Microsoft at all-time highs, bro, you know, boom, I already have my idea and my idea is just going to slowly start writing puts and, and that's it. Start with that. If I'm wrong there, then, you know, go back and reassess. That's it. That's, that's, that's really it. I keep it simple, man. I keep it simple. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions at all? And, and again, guys, you'll be back to regular programming with Mr. Wall Street Jesus. To get you back into the flow and and remember like i don't use the order flow like 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 a lot of folks do i just use it for the sentiment you know so for a lot of these names that that jesus will post here these will be when you pull when you pull them up these are going to be great day trades you know trading equity even trading the options as well you know but i'll gloss over most of this stuff and i'm just looking at shit like this i'm, I'm just looking at shit like you know, some spy stuff. I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at some of the bigger names, the Bank of America's too. Um, you know, something with some good size on it, you know, that's taking a solid direction, you know, shit like this, even though it's a block, um, you know, on spy, people betting all time highs there, the AMDs, you know, I look at stuff like that. All obviously all this Bank of America after the, uh, you know, the earnings there, the NVIDIA's, uh, you guys get the picture. I mean, look at this, right? You got SPY a year out here. This is a quarterly. This, is, I mean, this is way up there. You know, somebody threw a lotto ticket up there. I mean, look at this. This Facebook 2 mil. That's on a fucking weekly. Not sure exactly what this intent is, but, you know, you kind of flag these and, you know, take a deeper look at these. these this, this Microsoft here. I mean, we're going to see this. I think we're going to see this all week. We're going to see this all week and we're going to see this for weeks, especially if it starts to push towards this level. Like, Come on, come on. You're going to start seeing 144s, 145s, 150s. You know, Julian is saying, why are the sweeps more important than the blocks? The sweeps are always more important because of how they're, they're traded. And again, like for most of you guys who are asking this question, this is why tape is so important. And this is what most folks just can't understand or haven't been able to wrap their minds around. It's the idea that if you buy on the offer, and you buy aggressively on the offer, what does that mean? That means demand. It means demand. It means I don't give a shit what price you fill me at. Get me in and get me in right the fuck now. It is just a simple concept like that that is embodied in supply and demand and understanding tape. You know what I'm saying? So for, for, for those of you folks who don't trade um, tape, which is most of you, which is literally most of you, that's all we're doing here. This is this is all we're doing here. So Jesus here is a tape. Jesus here is a tape reader as well. Like this is what he does. He just trades the equity too. But this is why he kind of figured out uh, through his own methodology that these were the ones that he wanted to watch for. Because if somebody's going to come into the options on a friggin' off-brand illiquid name like one of these things or whatever he you know whatever he's throwing out here, especially this YNDX for example. You know, two years out, 50 call. If somebody's going to throw out 200 grand and doesn't give a shit what price he pays for it, because think about the spreads. Think about the spreads in names like this. You know, a YNDX, whatever the hell it is that he's throwing out here, just tags, whatever that is. 
you know? If people are going to cross a spread and buy a quarter million dollars of fucking options and not give a shit what price they pay for it, well, we need to pay attention to that, you know? That's somebody taking a bet and doesn't care what price, doesn't care what premium they're paying, you know? They could have parceled this order out over so many different ways to try to get a better fill, but this guy, he doesn't care. Chances are he's probably got some stock, probably got some other options with it. You know, there's something else going on there. These are players who are fucking serious, man. This is play. These are players who are fucking serious at what they do. You know, and that's why they, we call them smart many. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus calls them. Uh, um, what the fuck does he call them? Sway, you know, wise guys. Jesus calls them wise guys. You know, you can call them whatever. They damn sure ain't driving around in fucking rickshaws. Julian, I'll tell you that much. They, 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 you know, they're not coming outside the crib and hopping in a motherfucking rickshaw to go to work. I'll tell you that right now. So that's why that's why they're quite important. And again, if you if you don't understand that still, take the fucking course, bro. You need some, you know, you, you need some knowledge. Anybody else? Any other questions? If not, we'll wrap this thing up and uh, and good luck to you guys. Apparently, there's some riots in Barcelona. And they're, they're lighting fires in the street and shit. Airport might not be closed yet, but uh, take a look at that situation. If it gets any more aggressive, if they start closing down the airports there, that might be something interesting to watch. Um, Tele here is saying, uh, uh, do you offer any coaching on how to read the tape? Yes, we do. Go to sangluchi.com or actually go to 3ltplaybook.com and I'll send this all to you guys. All right. We got the new classes coming in December. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we see you in there. Anyways, good luck to you guys. Again, uh, I love the I love the slow uh, melt up here to all time highs and then some. But watch the tape bombs and any of the weak activity. Watch the weak activity. If they can't sell us off to, back down to 294, if they can't get us back down to spy 294 and below, you know, chances are we just we just start that slow, slow kind of melt up. If we have any days where we come back to 294, 292 to test, you know, we're not done with the nonsense. We're just not done with the nonsense, and it's going to be up and down, up and down, up and down, difficult to trade. And in that environment, I will most likely not be doing shit. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you soon.